The last time we were in South Kensington, we were on what was literally a building site, wearing hard hats, high-vis jackets, and steel cap boots to ultimately explore the concept of the other house. If you haven't yet watched that video, before you come any further with us today, you should head over to hoteldesigns.net to experience the first episode in that concept to completion series. One year on from when we launched that video where the bones of the brand were first exposed, we're back at the other house, South Kensington, now that it's officially opened, to explore the concept, understand how the drawings, the mood boards, and the entire vision has become a reality. I'm late to meet Naomi Heaton, the developer, the owner, and overall visionary of the other house, to pick up from where we last left it in the previous episode. So let's head inside. Naomi, let's start with the obvious. Last time we were here, we were on a building site. Now we're in this beautiful space. Tell us about the process from where we last saw you to now. What's it been like? Well, it's just been a fantastic experience. I mean, we've gone from literally bricks and mortar, which is what you saw, and a lot of steel beams, to something which is exquisitely beautiful everywhere you look. So it's been the most amazing couple of years. I'd say, in fact, been two and a half years. Are there any moments or any parts or concepts that kind of you weren't expecting to, to see. So how people have sort of interacted with the space, how has that sort of been? I think the absolute wow nature of literally everyone coming in here and just saying this is so unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. It feels great. I have guests who stop me. I don't know how they know actually who I am and thank me for having had such a wonderful stay. When we last spoke to you, I know that there were some details that were still under wraps and you were keeping hidden for the, for the big unveil. What were they? <laughs> well, I, I, I was just thinking about it and I don't think we told you very much at all. You didn't, you were kept it very so under the radar. I suppose, what were they? We walk around and you'll, you'll see what they were. And it was obviously this kind of uh, kaleidoscope of color and texture and boldness. I think that was that. We also have, in terms of our brand, it's a mix of contemporary and, and classical, and we have had these wonderful uh, illustrations done, which are kind of fantastical illustrations by a fantastic illustrator called Marina Rodriguez. And they are of different animals and, and different creatures in wild environments. And one of them is the owl and monkey design. And the owl and monkey is really important to us because I see all our guests as sharing values. And those values are to do with caring about our planet and the environment, being responsible in that way, but also looking always for new experiences. So I've always defined them as being wise as an owl, curious as a monkey. And our bar, our wonderful signature cocktail bar, is called the Owl and Monkey. And what you will see is that owl and monkey theme permeates throughout in little light touches in a lot of our tote bags or umbrellas, you name it. We have those designs. We've used this illustration to kind of counteract or, or to balance all the deep colors that we have. One of the most challenging aspects of this project is the fact that it's sheltered inside a heritage building. Integral, therefore, to the overall success is the architect. So let's catch up with Alistair Shepherd from Falconer Chester Hall, who, when last time we spoke to him, this was a building site. So Alistair, we're pretty much sat where we were stood in the previous episode when it was just a building site. And you have carved out this area of the hotel from, from nothing. So what, what was that process like? And what were the main challenges with that? Yeah, I mean, we, we inherited a building which was um, very cramped and dark and kind of a labyrinthine basement, really. So we had to bring light into these lower areas. And 
you know, there's a series of courtyards throughout the building. I think they all have a slightly different use. And this, this, this particular space connects um, leisure facilities, so um, the gym, yoga studio uh, and pool. And it has that visual connection with the, the upper, upper floors as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're really, really pleased we've been able to introduce kind of drama to the building mm -hmm. and, and surprises. You walk through the front door and you wouldn't necessarily imagine a sort of a two-storey space kind of at the heart of the building. Mm. And in terms of sustainability, how integral has that been to, to your sort of responsibilities on the yeah, project? I, think, I mean, certainly it's sort of a cornerstone of the project from the off. I think, you know, things like you know, upgrading the thermal fabric, the building, smart showers and fittings are kind of a given, but I think what perhaps separates this project is a sort of um, holistic approach where kind of individuals you know, through the app and through just spending time in, in the hotel can feel part of sort of an environmental journey really. Um, you know, we've got, we're sat in this beautiful space and the biophilia kind of joins the leisure mm -hmm. um, spaces together and I think that's a, you know, a, a really beautiful idea. Working on a project like the other house South Kensington is an interior designer's dream. I mean, maximalism is literally seeping from the walls. In the last episode, we all fell in love with Marie Solomon, the interior designer from Bergman Design House. I hear she's lurking somewhere in the public areas, so let's go find her. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, I ruined the art. You ruined the art? <laughs> yeah. Where did you start in terms of the design and how did it layer up to what it is now? I think, and I have to say, I do actually believe when you have the client and their heart on the project to make a difference, it makes the designer life really good and easy and enjoyable. So when we met Naomi, if you remember back in the concept, we came with a brief that was the typical, you know, setup for any hotel and it was like, we love your style, Mary, however, it's not a typical hotel. So mm. that was the first thing. And then with Naomi's vision working with us as well, so we knew that we will not be using the creams and the vanillas and the, the white yeah. or nudes. Naomi likes color, so that again was someone like me who likes color and being an artist, it was like a celebration of success, you know? For sure. So it started to just be enjoyable. I do remember one of the meeting, we started at 9 a.m. or just before 9 and we finished at 11. We ate pizza, pasta, coffees, oh, caffeine, just to survive, but it was one of the best days we had the client over mm -hmm. in, the, in the meeting, and it was more of a workshop, and almost like cooking, but with colors and textures, as you see, it is in the client favor, it looks amazing, but mm. it's every supplier nightmare because <laughs> <laughs> not one single chair has the same pattern or same color. However, they all work in harmony. For sure. So, uh, so layering was important. Every, every space is an art, including the back of the shelves. When you look at it and how the tapestries or tapestries like inspired us and the colors and the rugs, the antique rugs, every element is an art on its own. Mm -hmm. and it feels collected and once you're in you feel home. What are you hoping guests feel as they immediately walk into the public areas? When we started designing it, it was how to create pockets of experiences mm -hmm. and how we can affect your mood and how you come in and you instantly feel joyful, I want more, I want to see more. It's like a relationship, you know, how to actually build the anticipation. Yeah. And then when they go to the club flats, it truly feels zen mm. and calm. So you're giving them the place where they feel zen and calm and they can relax. You're giving them the excitement, you're giving them the joy, you're giving them the sexiness and the drama downstairs mm -hmm. in the private member club. And I think that is part of how we truly feel that it's very special. The other house, South Kensington, is full of surprises and it's been such an honour over the last year watching the brand emerge and meeting the people behind its creation. Who knows where the other house will emerge next, but I'm so looking forward to seeing how this brand progresses and evolves in the future. Cheers.